Let's continue talking about for loops. So we're here at this for each number, and we know that we have all this metadata being created, and we're using that to control parameters, but I want to show you an issue with our current setup right now. If I middle mouse at this end, the final result, we have 5,400 primitives. And if I go up here to our original cubes, I have 216. So, uh-oh, something's going bad. We have duplicate geometry happening within this for each loop. And this is something you have to be very careful of because this is a very easy mistake to make. So let's go ahead and follow the steps and see what's happening. We have our box, this is, we have our four boxes. Our for each begin says fetch input, so it fetches all four boxes. We go ahead and extrude. And then at the very end here, our gather method says merge each iteration. So what that means is that at the end of this whole chain, it's going to take whatever the final result is and it's going to send it back up at the top for another iteration. And because our method here says fetch input, with every single iteration, this for each begin is fetching whatever's up here. And that's why we have lots of polygons happening. We not only have each iteration being sent back up, but this for each begin is also picking up all this, uh, all this geometry. Now I should also mention that whenever the geometry gets sent back to the top of the for loop, it's not going to rerun this poly extrude on that first iteration again. The results of the first iteration are going to merge in with the second iteration, and that's why it's called merge each iteration. So in other words, this first iteration goes through, it gets sent back up, but it's the, uh, the poly extrude is not actually going to apply two times to that first iteration. It's just going to join with whatever the result of the second iteration is, and then so on and so forth with the third and the fourth. Now this, is, this uh, merge each iteration is good in certain circumstances. As a matter of fact, if I go back here to let's say our for each name piece example, this is also set to merge each iteration, but remember, with this, if I say we have you know, one iteration here, it's going to iterate, it's only going to pick up uh, piece by piece. So it's going to throw these cubes back up here, right? And then it says fetch piece or point, we've already gone through one iteration, so it's going to pick up the next piece, and that's why we don't have duplicate geometries. Now also I should mention that this for each name piece and this for each connected piece will stop iterating once it's reached through all the, the names or all the different class attributes. It'll stop once it's reached all the objects. However, when, whenever we go over here, we say for each number, it's actually specified by a specific number of iterations that we tell it to go by. So right now it says five and it just keeps on going. Right? It, it will, it'll go up till five, and then it, it'll be done. So in this case, if we want to not have all those extra polys, the answer is very simple. We set this gather method to feedback each iteration, and in this case, what's going to happen is that we are no longer uh, going to be able to send this back up. Now, you might think feedback, like we'll be able to send it back up, but because this is not set to feedback, it will not actually, it doesn't say fetch feedback, it's actually not going to be able to send the final result back up. And what ends up happening is that we basically have geometry going through and um, every single time it's going to pick up whatever's up here and only what's up here. And then our poly extrude can take advantage of all the metadata that's available to us there. Okay, so hopefully that all makes a bit of sense. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Uh, like I said, this part's probably the hardest part to get. So um, anyway, we have that. While we are on this topic of looping, I'm going to actually jump forward a little bit here and talk about this last option. So if I press tab and I say for, this for loop with feedback. So let's say that I did want to use feedback. Well, what's a good example of when you want to use feedback? Uh, well, here's a great one. So we have our sphere, it has a lot of polygons on it. Let's say that I want to reduce the polygons with each iteration. 
We go here to our begin. We fetch the feedback, which means that on the first iteration, it'll pick up the geometry. And then from there on out, it's only going to pick up whatever this end node throws back up, right? So this end node says iteration by count, and it says feedback each iteration. So Sphere goes through first iteration. Let's actually go here and say uh, iteration zero to start. So first iteration throws it back, gets poly reduced. Next iteration gets reduced even more and more and more. So it uses that same result and it just keeps on looping through with uh, whatever this end result comes up with. And it also doesn't pick up this sphere. So that's what feedback is doing there. Okay, there's two more and these last two are honestly pretty easy and very useful. This, this uh, next one here is for each point. And what that means is that we're going to basically iterate over all the various points going point by point. So let's say that we have our begin. On the beginning iteration, it's going to start by picking out one point. And then it's going to run this node. Right now I have it set to a copy to points and I have a sphere being copied to that point. And depending on the number of iterations, it just goes point by point. So right now we're at 56. But as you can imagine, we can just increase these numbers of iterations and then um, and then, you know, it'll just add more and more points with each iteration. This is very, very helpful whenever you're trying to instance things. And in the, in the next lesson, we're, we're actually going to get to that. But um, that's what the points is doing. And we also have this for the primitive, which is basically the same exact thing, except now we are iterating over primitives. So as I change this, our primitives get iterated over one by one. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the rest of the course on cgcircuit.com. On there, I'm going to go over all kinds of different modeling methods, not just the technical stuff, but how to get around the interface using hotkeys, how to actually make an awesome workflow with modeling in Houdini. So be sure to check that out, and thanks for watching.